this Bloomberg Quinn conversation on the future of gaming in India, which is powered by Hero Wire. I'm your host, Ivor Sones, and I'm editor of Special Features at Bloomberg Quint. Gaming isn't just about fun and relaxation, but it actually is serious business. Gaming is a mature industry that has always led the future of cutting edge technology, whether it is graphics in the past to AR VR today. And as a serious business, it also holds tremendous economic potential for a country like India in terms of jobs and more. In fact, 2020 saw India rise to the number one spot in mobile game downloads worldwide, clocking 7.3 billion installs. India is one of the top five mobile gaming markets in the world. And it also is a very, very significant market when it comes to hardcore games, which is games like PUBG, uh, Roblox, Minecraft, and more. Uh, today, in this Bloomberg Quint conversation, the future of gaming in India, powered by Hero Wired, and part of our series, Reimagining the Tech Wars, we will explore the state of the gaming in industry in India, the trends that are shaping its future, and how India can leverage the full potential of what gaming has to offer, and also how more and more people can enter this very exciting industry and the very exciting jobs that are on offer there. Uh, to help us do that, uh, we have with us today some very eminent guests who come from different uh, uh, sectors of the, the gaming industry, uh, so to speak. First up, we have Manohar Hochandani, who's Director of Business Development at Meta India, uh, which is, of course, better known sometimes in its earlier avatar as uh, Facebook. And at uh, Meta, Manohar leads gaming and AR, VR uh, in India. He leads... Uh, considerable uh, team that does a lot of work among creators, etc. Uh, next up, we have Siddharth, who's co-founder, uh, Siddharth Menon is co-founder at uh, Tegro Games, which is a web 3.0 games uh, ecosystem marketplace. Siddharth is a very successful entrepreneur. He uh, He's better known for having co-founded Bazirx, where he's a chief operating officer, besides many other entrepreneurial initiatives. And we also have with us uh, Kanishka Mohan, who is an associate partner with Red Seer. He leads client relations and engagements within the Redco practice of Red Seer. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, gentlemen, on this uh, discussion on the future of uh, gaming in India, which is brought to you by uh, Hero uh, Y. First up, I wanted to talk about the state of gaming in India and across the world. I wanted to understand from you all, what are some of the key trends that are driving this sector and how do you see these today? Thanks, Ivor. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here and a privilege to be on, on the same platform as uh, Manohar and Siddharth. As, as you pointed out, right, I've, I've written a, I've led a, the writing of a couple of reports on gaming. And on top of that, I've always been an avid, albeit a bit unsuccessful gamer. Right? Uh, from Prince of Persia to Captain Claw to Max Payne, to crisis, to PUBG, right? the, the evolution of gaming before my own eyes has been stupendous. Games have become more lifelike, more complex, and, and the screen at, on which they run have progressively become smaller. The hardware required to run it has become more sophisticated and more compressed. And the internet really uh, has just transformed the way the games and gamers have, are able to interact with each other. Right? I think these are super exciting times for gaming across the globe and, and especially in India. Um, even last year in 2021, we estimate that the gaming market alone was more than $2 billion. And by 2026, 27, we expect it to grow more than 3x uh, and exceed upwards of $7 billion. Right? And now these are stupendous numbers. And moreover, the market seems to be maturing across multiple markers in user sophistication, uh, propensity to pay for, for upgrades and for premium content. Um, the quality of talent, uh, which is available to develop these games specifically for India, and, and the capital inflows, right? the VC and PE community is also that much more um, willing to put in more money across uh, the entire value chain. This represents an enormous upside for founders and investors and players in this space over the coming decade. Now, India also, like I think the 
uh, other point that I probably also wanted to cover was the fact that the last two years straight, um, India has seen the highest proportion of first time gamers, paying gamers, right? Over 50 to over 50% why on why out of any country in the world. At a scale of 10 billion gaming apps uh, downloaded in 2021, Gaming in India is, is really a once in a lifetime opportunity. And, and we truly expect, we are, we are very, very positive about you know, how, how we expect the entire industry landscape to change. But no, from your perspective at Meta, again, you all are very, very bullish uh, on gaming. So from your perspective, can you tell us a little bit about how you see the state of uh, gaming in India? I think I go to go with Kanishka's point of view. I think gaming has seen a phenomenal amount of expansion in India, specifically online gaming, driven by two factors: uh, the factors on smartphone uh, and factors of connect better connectivity. I think those are two important uh, parameters that started in 1819 and then consolidated when we got COVID pandemic, which actually accelerated everything around gaming significantly. Uh, what I see also from a meta perspective is a few things. We offer a platform which gives you play, watch, and connect on the same platform. So you could actually play a game on the platform. You could actually watch the best creator that you have who is creating on a game that you like. Or you can come and connect with us on the community. And this matches very well with our uh, overall vision at Facebook, which is to build the communities overall. And we are committed to building the gaming community in India, a place for everyone to enjoy and experience games together. Uh, from a last few years perspective, we've seen gaming video and the creator ecosystem expand significantly, not just in terms of large creators, but also creators that come in from smaller centers like Kanpur and, uh, and South India and a whole lot of Northeast people coming in. So, I think we are seeing participation across India. That's the first thing that I want to communicate. Second thing that we want to communicate is that diversity is building out. Uh, and the diversity is building out around gender, diversity is building out around language, and diversity is also building out around gameplay. Uh, earlier, we used to see a few games uh, getting streamed or played. Now we see a variety of games getting to be streamed and played. And this is all getting played out because the internet is also getting uh, coming up at different places. For example, the rural internet is growing faster over the last uh, 18 months than the urban internet. And they want vernacular content. They want the local games to also come online. So you see pen pen penetration of Ludo, Teen Patti, and local games that people would want to play. So we see a huge potential coming into this at this time from COVID. And from here on, we just see acceleration happening. What about you, uh, Siddharth? Now, you know, I, I uh, the same question, but I also wanted to add uh, uh, something else, right? Uh, you, you've you been an entrepreneur. You, you all have been very successful at uh, Vazirx, one of India's largest uh, uh, crypto exchanges. So how do you see gaming in India? And also, how do you see disruption really uh, happening? Because again, you've been an entrepreneur and you've disrupted uh, uh, sectors. So what is really shaping this uh, industry today? Absolutely. So I think uh, gaming is going through a lot of revolution, uh, not just not just, you know, Web 3, Web 2, but within gaming itself, like, you know, like both of them said, uh, since last five years, we have seen a very big uptick. It's like they call it the geo movement or, you know, when, when you have Internet access to everybody, uh, things are changing. Uh, hardways are getting uh, cheaper and, you know, and, uh, and has more performance. So, you know, what you pack within a mobile is much more uh, you know, powerful than, you know, you actually have to own a PC to play. So it's it's much more easier for uh, for folks to come on board and start playing. Now you have hardcore play, uh, games like, you know, Counter-Strike to uh, Mask Gun to uh, games like PUBG or, you know, uh, uh, many other hardcore games. And then you have the casual games like, you know, Ludo and, and Team Patti and many other games. So, most of the Ludo games or, or Teen Patties are probably, uh, what we see is are, are folks who are a little older in age and are coming coming back and getting adopted to the games. But very soon they also move to newer uh, casual games, which are more newer generation games, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of action happening there. Uh, this is just an initial uh, you know, signals that we see 
hey, this is possible, that is possible. Hey, you know, uh, what if we do this? And would that, would that sort of connect the dots for uh, anybody? Ultimately, the, the journey is for a uh, journey is from casual gaming to a uh, hardcore gaming. And hardcore gaming is really picking up. And especially the ones that is a bit more social, for example, PUBGs, uh, where people are now building plans and you know building a team and trying trying to play this it's no longer just you know one is too many or you know it, it's it's now about bringing your uh your social circle to the gaming circle and and, and there's a lot of the smaller bit of evolution that is happening within india and uh, you know luckily we are now sort of lucky with the infrastructure that we have today where it's now possible right like everybody rightly said, the pandemic literally accelerated this whole growth uh, of, of gaming uh, together because folks are sitting at home and you still need to be active, right? And I think gaming has done that. Uh, in my opinion, there's a new... So game has become very, very immersive and, you know, uh, in terms of how we see things, the, the visuals have become much more realistic. So things are also evolving there as well. As well. Uh, I genuinely believe there's another new genre that is sort of coming up in the Web3 space is, is where while the games are getting very real in visual space, it's also getting real in the financial space as well. So what you do within the game actually has an impact outside the game financially. So there's an economic upside opportunity and all those sort of things, which is a is little more disruptive since last uh, a couple of years we've been in, the, in this. And, and I, I personally believe that this could be like a next big thing. Some, something very similar to what internet, uh, sorry, mobile games did, you know, in 2007. I literally, you know, uh, moved the market, <clears throat> the gaming markets and, and got a new genre of games for mobile and changed the way how we play mobile. I believe that, you know, we, are, we, are, we, we can see something starting now, which could pro uh, possibly change the way people play games in future. Uh, Kanishka, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, Manohar made a very important uh, uh, point, right, of how within Meta they're seeing uh, gamers coming from uh, B and C class cities, uh, where the diversity, there's this. So, so literally, in, in a way, right, gaming is going towards Bharat, right, uh, not just India as the typical, the top 100 million. Uh, do you see that happening even for uh, hardcore uh, games in India, higher end games in India? What, what, what any any trend you're, you're seeing there? Because as uh, internet penetration uh, uh, grows, do you do you uh, do you see e even that moving? Because earlier it was mainly urban centers, you know, that we were seeing a lot of this. Oh, absolutely. So I'll I'll just try and give you a sense of you know maybe put some perspective with numbers around it. So um, I think last year we estimated there are about four hundred to four fifty million um, users gamers. In India, right? And gamers are practically anyone who spends more than five minutes on a game. Of course, there's my dad, right, who will just refuse to start any game on his computer. But even so, right, there are, there is, on the other hand, there is my mom who will just spend so much time crushing candy, right? Um, now, hardcore gamers tend to be like, we estimate less than about 10%, right? Around the five to six percent mark of this. Uh, entire large space. Now, over the next four or five years, we estimate that because of rising interest, because of what you know, all the trends that Manohar and Siddharth have already talked about, the massification of access, we expect that this 400, 450 number will actually move up to something like 700, 750. Right? And uh, even if that hardcore gaming percentage remains sub 10%, we are talking about a 2x, 3x increase in, in terms of the sheer number of uh, people who actively spend time on um, playing these complex, more immersive games. Right? The other big characteristic of hardcore gamers also tends to be the fact that they are already spending upwards of 200 to 50 rupees a month on simply buying character upgrades and um, you know, buying new costumes and whatnot. B, they are also the guys who are spending the most amount of money on buying expensive hardware. Right? So they are the ones who will buy your specific gaming uh, smartphones. And they, will, they are the ones who will line up in queues to buy a PS5. And third, they also tend to be their micro community influencers. Um, they also encourage their friends and family to stay ahead of the curve. 
right? So this 10% really has a massive multiplier effect through the entire community. Right? And, and uh, I think the last point that I would probably want to make on this is, you know, um, the first time payers in this entire group of people is, is steadily increasing, which is why um, the overall market that we estimate on, on gaming is going to be significantly higher. Right? These hardcore gamers are influencing everybody to be able to pay more to perhaps catch up. Um, and I think Siddharth slightly touched upon it. Games like Roblox and uh, Axie Infinity, it, they're um, A, of course, that's encouraging the creators to create new content, but also is really translating into big dollar numbers. So that, uh, I think a lot of what Kanishka is referring to leads me to a uh, Web3 games, which is really seems to be the future. And you, you're really a, a pioneer in this. So can you tell us about how this is really disrupting uh, gaming? And what's the thesis behind this growth? And also the fact, you know, that uh, while hardcore gamers spend, I, I believe in Web 3.0 gaming, there is the involvement of crypto too, because you can earn, etc. So where do you see uh, this going? Now, uh, uh, Kanishka really uh, had, uh, you know, mentioned some fantastic numbers in terms of growth of gaming in India. That seems very, very encouraging, literally, and literally everybody. And we are seeing that. Uh, in our families, right? Uh, my kids, for instance, are, are on uh, uh, Roblox, uh, Minecraft, uh, etc. Uh, unfortunately, Manu, they're not allowed on Facebook yet. <laughs> so uh, they can't use those. So they are uh, mainly into that. But so so where, where, do, you, where do you see this uh, really going, Web3.0 web gaming? Uh, so the Web3.0 gaming, right? It's, it's not very, very different than two, but, but uh, the, the biggest difference right now is what we see is the introduction of two more people in the in the whole ecosystem so in web 2 it was more about entertainment you play games for entertainment right like you have fun you you create something it's just it's the satisfaction that you get but in web 3 uh, yes there is entertainment but there are two more important there's players and now there are two more people that have come on the play that is traders and investors right so it's it's now become more of a like a monopoly layer, the monopoly game layer on every other game, right? So there's, there's more of a business that is coming on top of the game layer. And it's pretty interesting because if you think about it, right, like uh, the game asset, uh, the game asset that you see within the games are now becoming an investable class by itself. And, and that's the transformation that we are seeing, right? Like, so for example, people would uh, put their funds into say, <clears throat> Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum or you know Polygon and many other tokens, but probably don't understand you know how these tokens work or what's the what's the use case of the token. But when in the Web3 space, suddenly when you talk about an asset like say land or water or you know bullets, there is a very good uh, correlation of understanding of how these assets can be used, which also means that there's a lot more retail liquidity that is coming into these assets. Now that's the basic premises of it, right? Like, so when we say the thesis is, if it is becoming an investable class, is it a sustainable investing app? Okay, that's another question that we need to answer. But at the, at the very grand scheme of things, it looks like it's, this is going to be a next big uh, investable class in the whole crypto space. So you have the gaming uh, industry, which is already going through a lot of revolution and the crypto you know, industry, which is also going through a lot of revolution. And when you just connect the uh, two together, you see something where there's a lot of big, a big intersection of a new genre where you are addressing three important players in the market, right? One is the players, then the investors, as well as the traders. Uh, it changes the game completely because now <clears throat> there's an economic opportunity for everybody, right? So just like a commodity market, what you play within the game, um, let's say, you know, if there is too much water and, and if, if you are a trader, you can speculate it and you would trade that uh, within the game, right? So based on how the players play. And if you're an investor, you're mostly most likely thinking about, hey, saying, hey, you know, water is going to be scarce forever or land is going to be scarce forever. Might as well, I'll, I'll you know, uh, invest into it for a long term perspective. So these two uh, uh, actions are now sort of shaping the Web3 game by itself. And it's fundamentally changing the ga uh, gameplay or maybe carving out a new genre of game gameplay itself. 
and i think that's that's going to be another big thing uh it, so today you know, the game markets uh, do about what 200 billion in in revenue out of which actually not more than 100 uh, goes to actually players right because this this web2 games are more built for entertainment so it's the game devs who essentially make the money but in web3 it's more about the community so when the game becomes big everybody sort of you know there's an upside for it the entire network uh, there and though today the game markets are at 1.2 trillion dollar uh, market cap we believe this uh, this this whole new genre that is coming in just like how how it uh, sort of increased the crypto industry to about 1.7 trillion dollar market we believe even the game industry could be pushed to about a 2 to uh, 3 trillion dollar market in next you know uh, five to ten years and that is very exciting to see you know a lot more capital coming in uh, already like i've been working with games since 2018 web 3 games you know people start with putting hundred dollars as an investment class right and and now they have progressed to investing at least 100k per month uh, some of the individuals so you can already see a progress of how the how investors are also you know looking at these investable class and how the volumes are increasing and how the capital coming into this uh, space is also increasing and fast forward from five years from now, I think it's, it's just going to be a norm if, if, if we can build more sustainable games there. So I think this is the place that you know really excites me also uh, to see a market or an industry, you know, just starting off something that we have seen with even Bitcoin and, you know, would love to be sort of a supporter of this and you know, build this ecosystem really good for everybody. That, that sounds really exciting, uh, Siddharth. Manor, uh, you know, we, we, you, we, we spoke a little bit about uh, casual games uh, in the beginning. But, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the creator economy. In fact, Siddharth referred to economic opportunities. And that's where I believe the creator economy also has a huge role to play. Because, you know, uh, the game, like, like we said, you know, gaming in India is about casual gamers. And that's where perhaps the big numbers are hardcore gamers. And of course, even people watching games, uh, people watching gamers play. For instance, I, I see that in my own kids. Uh, but I, I notice that when they're on YouTube, for instance, right, they're constantly watching somebody else play uh, uh, either Roblox or uh, FIFA, uh, etc. So how important is the creator economy really? And uh, what is it doing for this country? And how is Meta really working on helping develop uh, this economy? So basically, the creator economy is an important element of building communities and enhancing communities for driving an outcome. Now, if you take that, gaming is closely tied to our mission of giving people the power to build communities and bring the world closer together. Uh, both the gentlemen uh, on the panel have said that gaming is now becoming one form of an important entertainment form uh, in addition to economics of building out a variety of uh, different uh, kinds. I think what we are looking at is two or three folds to answer your question. First, is the whole creator economy today is getting an inclusion done from a Bharat and India perspective. We see uh, the large creators who came in first came in from India, from the metro cities, but we are now seeing nano and micro creators who are becoming large and vernacular building out from B, C, D class towns, which is basically taking these games from casual games. They play these games on casual games like Ludo to begin with, but as they migrate, they migrate over to the AAA games. And then they basically increase their fan base. And after they increase their fan base, monetization becomes an important element. There are two forms of monetization as we see in the creator economy currently. What the platform pays via ads, and second is what the user pays to that perspective. And in user pay, we have two particular forms of monetization at this point. We have uh, stars, uh, which is basically you buy that and uh, get a shout out from your creator or get a call out uh, for your creator or, and then there's subscription for content that this creator makes, which is uh, only for you as you become subscriber to that content. So. I think both these are building out as we see in India. Uh, initially, people thought people won't pay in the user pay category, but now people are paying for content and people are paying for getting called out by their key creators as they start to scale in different uh, genres. And another important point in this creator economy is I think languages are building out. 
as we see earlier, it was English and Hindi. Now we see a lot of other regional languages building out and a lot of people forming that as their core subscriber base as they go along. The second piece is to your casual game, as you asked me, which is away from creator economy. I think the casual games business is something like uh, Siddharth rightly pointed out or Kanishka pointed out. I'm sorry, I'm missing out. But I think it's adding to the age dynamics. Uh, if the serious gamer who's geeky started being a younger person, I think the older person is what the casual games business is bringing to the platform. And as they go along, they move through the genres from casual to mid-core casual to AAA games. I think it's a formation as you start to learn because casual games also are very simple to play at different levels to the point that I think Kanishka made about his mother playing Candy Crush. My wife also plays Candy Crush, by the way. And that is because they have different levels to keep people engaged. But as they move along, they move along to serious games. And I think that's the migration that they're talking in five years. So just answering your question, it's a very important point that monetization starts to create the creator economy. And we are very focused from meta perspective on making sure that people make their careers on this. To answer this a little more with examples for you, I think we are seeing people like Aparna Shukla from Kanpur, who's one of our biggest uh, women creator. Started from Facebook, um, brother suggested, if you're doing streaming, why don't you pick this up as a profession? And now she's actually making a lot of money and, uh, and fan base on our platform. Similarly, somebody uh, from uh, called Mystique uh, is doing that from Northeast. And then there is a, then we are breaking the silos, husband and wife team break combining together and actually breaking the silo that game gaming is just time pass, but not making money. So there is Mr. And Mrs. OP who come from, I think Bihar, and they are basically putting together about half a million fans that they have, and they make a sufficient money on Facebook platform. So we are breaking the silos that game is just for entertainment. A lot of people taking this as profession and building out today. Well, that, that's really uh, very interesting. And I'm especially fascinated by these uh, uh, stories, these examples you gave, because you know these, these were careers that didn't exist earlier. Nobody imagined that uh, they, would, they would happen, but they have happened. And it's, it's, it's very interesting uh, for India. Uh, you know, we, we, we've looked at various aspects of gaming. We've dealt with uh, casual, we've dealt with hardcore, we've dealt with web 3.0, we've dealt with you know, where, where gaming is at. Uh, uh, going. And I think one thing is very clear that, you know, that the numbers are there, etc. But now how does India really achieve scale when it comes to the other as the business end of uh, gaming, right, which is developers, studios, creators, etc. How do we improve the, the entire ecosystem? Or do we just let it go as it is? And or are there things that, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, we need to do as an industry, as the government, uh, et cetera, uh, to do this. And perhaps this, this is a question I'd like to throw at all of you because each of you brings very different uh, perspectives. Um, India in itself, by the way, has shown a stupendous rise in the number of game developers. Right? So besides about, we estimate there are about 300 game development companies and about 15,000 game developers. There are also more than 5,000 game publishers present on Google Play Store, uh, offering more than 20,000 games across categories. Right? Um, and by the way, there are we estimate there are about direct 50,000 uh, gaming jobs in India and 3x as many indirect jobs, uh, which are potentially getting uh, you know, cascaded around this. And as per, I think this was on Indeed or Nokri, um, like people searching for game development as a career itself, as an interest case, that's also increasing uh, year on year. Right? And, and I think one, of course, a lot of it is self-driven itself, right? gamers um, who want to become developers and creators themselves. That's, that's one aspect of it. B, I think even the ecosystem itself is playing a very important role in um, you know, making this uh, a more accessible career. For example, I think a special call out to the government of uh, Telangana, who's, uh, who, who created an STPI uh, in Hyderabad, which is a center of excellence to provide resources 
like incubation and mentoring um, and funding for gaming, animation, VFX, etc. Right. In fact, I think uh, Manohar mentioned the rise in Northeast. There is also a special center of excellence being set up in Ezawal. Right. Um, again, with, with very similar intent to promote the uh, gaming aspect in that particular region. And beyond that, of course, there is your whole host of your private upskilling programs. Manohar, well, what, what's your take on this? How does India really achieve scale? What are you all trying to do over there? I think uh, Kanishka spoke about the developer community. Uh, I would try and get you a creative view on this because that's an, another important view. Uh, I see uh, us, for example, working together with micro and nano creators through our level up program, which gives them the tools, the, the mechanism to learn a lot of things. And as they go along, start to get monetization because an element of learning is just not tutorials that we provide or handholding through our agencies, but also a fixed method for them to reach a particular point from which it becomes an interesting profession for them. So we are looking at what programs we have in the creator side, which is Level Up that we launched a little while back, uh, some years back, which is starting to build micro and nano communities in India as they go along in different sectors and segments of the play. In addition, uh, from a community perspective, we also launched a program uh, for uh, which will last for six months where we're getting community admins to start coming and forming groups on Facebook and start to enhance their careers in terms of taking these communities forward. Because I think an important element as we all understand is also building the community here so that it becomes stronger and self-learning starts to happen there. So uh, that is our second piece in terms of building communities that we recently launched about uh, three months back. And we want to carry that for six months where we'll get about 50 admins to, to come and learn and significantly scale on the platform and then go and teach a variety of other people from here. The third piece on the developer side is where we are working together with a variety of Indian developers, uh, people like Bombay Play and others were recently mm -hmm. in the news, where they come and work together with us and work on some of our social features that we have to basically go and enhance uh, multiple people coming and playing together and offering them a global perspective of landing their games. So it's a three-way process for us. We put together a lot of tutorials and learning sessions uh, via programs like Level Up. We're doing the community work in terms of enhancing the community admins. And third, we work together with developers in figuring out how to get them scaled so that they can enhance and put in more people on their roles. So that your views? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, first to just to establish, right? Building games is really hard uh, just to understand because see, it's not just the tech, it's not just one thing that you have to get it right, you have to get a lot of things right. It's a production house, uh, you know, pipeline of uh, performance, the code, the bugs, uh, the tech side of things. Then you're talking about the art side of things, you know, it should look visually good, graphics should have, has to be better, characters has to be good, the movements of the character has to be good. And of course, the gameplay itself, right? So there are a lot of things that has to go together to make a very successful game. And, and, and building a game itself is an art. Uh, let's face it, right? Like India has been a place where uh, the game development is was most of most uh, known for its outsourced market. Like it's been a place where a lot more game of uh, sorry, uh, you know, outside games are being developed within India because of the you know the cost and everything around it. But essentially, to build a game within India uh, by you know Indian founders takes a bit of uh, you know it, it's a challenging step because, like I said, you need to get the rest of the things together. But we are lucky, right? Like in the last five years, we've been seeing a lot more action happening. Uh, Pune has an university around gaming and many other things that is sort of coming together, uh, which is essentially increasing the quality of uh, the game. The point I'm trying to say is it's it's very difficult to you know change this industry on day one. It takes time, but there is a good effort that is being put together. The moment we have one game that is crossing a hundred million dollar mark, is when we'll see more uh, more things kicking off. There's already been a lot more investment that is coming into this this, this market, and I think uh, things are shaping in the right direction. Uh, we also like you know building uh, Web three games. We are also trying to see how can we incubate and sort of help these uh, you know game studios to build a better game. Uh, you know you need direction, you need a bit of incubation, you need some funding and everything around it. That all has to. That's just an infrastructure part 
but within the game itself has to be you know this this art has to be sort of taught to everybody to build it out and i think uh, this is going to be a bit more progressive we have like uh, you know triple a games like raji and uh, you know sort of who have gone uh, global and sort of made a mark and i, I hope uh, more games like this sort of come out out of india which is going to make a you know uh, epic name outside right so i I've, i've been talking to a lot of indian game studio and i can already see some really good progress that is happening obviously games take couple of years to be built but uh, hopefully in next uh, one or two years we should see really good games uh, coming out in the market Uh, from india completely built from india and another good thing that has come during the pandemic is uh, even the indian game developers were able to now outsource their work for quality work right like because you know you are not able to get the source the right quality in india now they are able to outsource it outside india and work remotely and bring that quality back and then also learn from it and you know teach uh, people within india so i think it's it's going to be that circle that's going going to go multiple times and essentially the spiral will improve the quality of the games that's coming out of india finally what can the uh, industry do right to um, to to boost uh, the number of game developers etc is there something that the government we we've already spoken about you know i think there are various centers of excellence there are uh, uh universities uh etc but you know when it comes to let's say upskilling and that that's something that's very very important today because uh you know in in various sectors and in technology for instance there are job losses in some elements right but some of those uh, developers could could get into gaming so how do they really uh, go about it i think uh i guess part of it is of course the fact that you know there is the organic demand which already exists is getting recognized by everyone it will uh, for example till about 2 or 3 years ago there was no gaming specific investor which was present in india right today there are funds such as lumikai which invest exclusively in indian gaming that was practically unthinkable 3 years ago so one one part of it is that there is an organic recognition of of this entire potential in india and uh, investors are are in putting in their dollars and you know that what siddharth was talking about earlier the transformation of india as an outsourcing uh, hub is now indians developing for india is a trend which is which is purely organic playing out um beyond that i think uh, inorganically like i think manohar the kind of initiatives that he is talking about the ability to create incentives for both creators players and developers right which um, and at least i think siddharth will have a much more clearer view on what web3 gaming means it's still a bit nebulous in my mind but you know if there is communities and systems which encourage money money creating potential across the board is where the inorganic push happens right for example um you know esports as a career itself is is just one more avenue um of being able to make this more mainstream so whether it comes from sponsorships or it comes through uh, or the like communities or it comes through uh, the dissemination of wealth itself through the platform itself what that was earlier referring to okay all of these are inorganic incentives which i think will naturally push uh, the or make gaming a more lucrative career for everyone in the entire ecosystem well you know we we really had a, a fascinating uh, uh, discussion and i think you all have brought so many different uh, aspects of gaming some some of which were uh, new to me too uh, and i think we really headed for very exciting uh, times you know as manohar as you and meta you all developed the creator economy and create a whole new genre of jobs that didn't exist before uh, siddharth as you know you drive web3 uh, gaming which is really, really the uh, future and again uh, you know uh, uh, merge gaming and crypto etc blockchain uh, which is really the future of uh, uh technology so i think that's a very exciting uh, uh trend and i think kanishka i think certainly what what we'll see 
over the next couple of years from your reports will be a far a far uh, richer ecosystem, a far more resilient uh, ecosystem in gaming that really helps power various aspects of India's economy and also helps deliver uh, jobs. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, discussion, gentlemen. It's been a really le great learning experience and uh, for showing us how gaming, which is often just considered a relaxation or leisure, is actually big business and can benefit this nation at large. Thank you so much. Thank you.